and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to talk to you about a special weekend of historical events related to the arrival of the first Africans right here in Hampton. Um, I have two guests, Chanel Henry and Artisha Green. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to start out by asking, why do we commemorate what's really a painful part of our history that, you know, maybe we don't want the uh, recognition, the attention of being the place where enslaved Africans were first brought to this country. It's a painful chapter. It's a painful chapter, but I think it's important that we always take the moment to reflect back on where we began or where we took a pause in history, where something happened historically, so that we can learn lessons from that occasion and move those things over into the present. Now, I should have said in the intro that you are an academic, you're at William and Mary, and you gave that academic answer that we have to, we, we can't forget our history. Absolutely. It, it made us who we are today. You wouldn't be here today in all likelihood doesn't mean everything in the past was great or smooth. I mean, it can be with tremendous pain and loss, but it happened. Absolutely. Um, we talk about other history. We, we go back and commemorate all kinds of other historical events, and wars were always painful times when, when lives were lost and, and things, but it's part of who we are. And so people who maybe say, oh, we talk about race too much, or we talk about this too much. It may just be because it's more recent, more painful, more difficult, but it's the same thing as anything else in history that we commemorate, right? Indeed, indeed. So I started out with the bad stuff. Now let's go <laughs> with what is, you're, you're designing this whole special weekend of events that are part solemn, part um, educational, part um, maybe a little bit more joyous of some of the other things. What, who, who is doing this? Who is bringing together this big focus on 1619? And I, I'm gonna turn to you for that, Chanel. Sure. You represent all the pieces. Sure. <laughs> the African Arrival Day event is a joint uh, collaboration between four agencies, um, the National Park Service, Fort Monroe, the City of Hampton, and the 2019 State Commemorative Commission. So all of these agencies have been working together to put on this weekend of events. In addition, uh, the 2019 Hampton Commemorative Commission, which is co-chaired by Dr. Kalita Fairfax and retired Lieutenant Colonel Claude Van, they have played a very vital role, advisory role, in uh, this event as well on the behalf of the city. So you are representing all the agencies that are working together, yeah. and this commemoration in 2019 will be throughout the state. Yes, uh, the 2019 commemoration will include other elements that um, are not part of this weekend of events. And Artisha, you represent specifically the Hampton Group that yes. is planning for our role, our commemoration. Tell us just a little bit more about that and why we're working now for something that's you know still a few years off. Well, we want to take this opportunity to prepare our uh, citizens and those who may come from afar uh, to, to learn the history, and particularly Hampton's role in that, uh, throughout the next four years because the actual commemorative event is in 2019. So we would like to begin by having some signature events in 2016 and around the same time each year as we move forward into 2019. And then maybe beyond. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> there are certainly other groups in Hampton that do um, educational events or events about, um, you know, either the arrival or the contrabands or all of the significant, because it didn't stop in 1619. <laughs> that was the beginning point. And there's still a tr tremendous amount of struggle and contributions and things that 
we still talk about today. Indeed. So the commemorative, the Hampton 2019 Commemorative Commission includes representatives um, from the city of Hampton as well as some of those cultural groups who have particular interests in this kind of history as well. And so it's a nice um, collaborative effort that has a representation from a numerous constituents across the city of Hampton who are invested in this kind of history. Okay, so let's talk about that weekend. What kind of events, um, well not kind of, what events are we gonna have? What might we wanna do that weekend? Cause it's jam packed. You guys have a lot of stuff planned. We do, um, so we're kicking off Friday and some of the highlights there, we have public tours of the Godspeed which will be taking place at downtown uh, Hampton Public Pier. That'll be from nine to 2 p.m. And then we'll be um, having the play that'll take place uh, crossing a deep river, ritual drama and three movies at the Mary T. Christian Auditorium. And Artisha, I don't know if you want to jump in and give a little more about the play. Um, I think do. that is, um, <laughs> this is an original play written by one of your colleagues at William & Mary. And Absolutely. tell us a little bit about the plot. So the play was written by Dr. Joanne Braxton. She's the senior African-Americanist at the College of William & Mary in both our English and Africana Studies departments. And she began having inspiration for this play well over well over 20, almost 30 years ago at this point. And so she had some earlier phases of development at the W.E.B. Du Bois Institute at Harvard University. She's also the director of the Middle Passage Project at the college, and so her work there has enabled her to bring this work to light. And it is the story of an African-American Southern writer who's looking to reconcile Roughly her present. Roughly contemporary. Mm -hmm, who's looking to reconcile her present with her past. And so she journeys to West Africa, and in her journey there, which is both psychological and literal, she's collecting these memories, these narratives, uh, and she's She's moving all of that back across the Atlantic here to the United States. And in doing so, she reconciles the history for herself, but she also had, there's a collective reconciliation for her ancestors who made the crossing across the Atlantic. So they reconcile their past and present here in America. And this will be the first time the play has been staged in Hampton. It has been staged uh, how many other times and where? Uh, at the W.E.B. Du Bois Inst uh, Institute at the College of William & Mary as well as Morgan State University. So this is really, you know, this is exciting. This is a play most of us haven't seen. This is a play the nation as a whole hasn't seen. And we have a chance to see it right here in Hampton. Absolutely. Um, how much does this cost? It's $10. It's not, a, not a bad, not, not at, at all. all. That's a great, all. you're in the theater department, you know what it costs to go see a good play. Indeed, and it's at 7 p.m. on August 19th at the Dr. Mary T. Christian Auditorium at Thomas Nelson University. So how did, you, okay, you have a personal experience with this play and that mm -hmm. you were in it during, yes. during the staging at William & Mary. How did it make you feel? How did you, what is the, is the emotion that you got out of it? Well, I remember it being a very emotional journey it for myself. Uh, the rehearsal process included an opportunity for us to go engage in a process drama uh, through uh, actually going inside the hull of a ship. We went to visit uh, the Jamestown, Yorktown, um, and in that, a physical, literal experience, we brought that back into the rehearsal process. And so I remember there being lots of moments where it was very difficult for me as an actor uh, to, move, to move forward, but we had a very uh, gracious and nurturing experience with our professors. Dr. Braxton was also a part of that. And she reminded us continuously that although we may not understand what we were doing at that particular moment, we were 18, 19 years old, just about to graduate from college, oh. that it would be a defining moment in our lives. And it took me all the way until, gosh, I was at past graduation, past graduate school. I was teaching students of my own before that finally clicked for me. Interesting, yeah. interesting. So mm -hmm. people should be prepared for 
an amazing piece of theater, but also an emotional experience. Wherever, wherever you are, wherever you're coming from, you're going to be hit by well, it's that, not, I would think. Indeed, but it's not just uh, emotional trauma. I think we, have to, well. I think we have to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And when we experience those feelings, it's part of the process of reconciliation. But there's also joy there as well. And so I think we should be prepared to move through a range of emotions. Right, and isn't that what a good play does? It a good should. play takes us from where we are and, and leaves us somewhere else. Indeed. That sounds great. Okay, so that's Friday night. That's Friday. And then so Saturday, um, we're moving to Fort Monroe, um, and we'll be kicking off um, 8.30 to 11 o'clock. The Project 1619 is producing the commemorative ceremony, which will entail African naming ceremony, prayer service, African dancers and drummers, um, and music. And then after that, we're going to be having a um, welcome ceremony at the bandstand. Our keynote speaker will be Roland Martin. And then, So now let's yeah, talk a little bit about Roland Martin because yeah. people know that name. Yeah. Roland Martin's American journalist. He's currently on tele uh, TV One. Um, he also was on CNN for That's several years. Most people, yes, will click yes. With so that, we're yeah. excited that he's um, going to be involved in this event. Um, we'll also have other, you know, uh, city, state, and local officials that'll be coming to uh, officiate the ceremony. After the ceremony's over, we're going to kick off with some live music from regional um, musical acts such as Strictly Business, the Jay, the Jay Sinnott Trio, and the Rhythm Project. So that's where we get maybe into the more fun, celebrating kind of exactly, just uh, you know, um, displaying uh, different types of music um, as well as we'll kick off youth activities, which will have uh, living history tours. We'll have guided walking tours, first-person interpreters representing people like Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, and. Mary Peak. We also will have a film showing. Uh, the Casemate Museum has a new exhibit uh, that's opening, I think it opened in July, on the contraband story and mm. the Jefferson Door. Uh, Hampton History Museum is also um, unveiling a new exhibit on 1619 Arrival Story. Oh, I didn't know that yeah. yet. Oh, that's really exciting. Yeah, so there's a lot that going museum. on that weekend. Uh, that evening, Project 1619 is also doing a Juneteenth jazz concert at the American Theater. And then Sunday, they're going to also have uh, another uh, film showing. Um, that evening at the American Theater. So it's going to be a great weekend of events. People need to come out, bring their family. It's going to be a lot of educational activities, um, as well as, you know, a good time to bond um, with family and friends uh, at this significant historical event. That's wonderful. And aside from the play, there is, and I'm going to say this, and you correct me if I'm wrong, there's no cost. Right, the, the weekend. Or the jazz concert. The jazz concert, there's a fee, as so well the as the basically. film festival at the theater, there's a fee. But our film showing at Fort Monroe is free, as well as the other activities, they're all free to the public. Because they've been underwritten. Yeah, <laughs> just let's give some credit yes. to the people who are paying for those. Right, they've been underwritten um, by the state. So uh, that's why the activities are going to be free the state, the city of Hampton, National Park Service, and Fort Monroe Authority. That sounds wonderful. And yeah. as you say, the event, the whole weekend moves you through some of those same kinds of emotions as mm -hmm. the play will because Indeed. it is a complex and nuanced thing. We can't talk about one moment in history without all of the other things that go along with it. Absolutely. Yes. So in a nutshell, why... Why, and I'm looking at either one of you here, either <laughs> one, but why does, why was 1619 this defining time in our history? Well, you know, 1619 arrival story, we're commemorating the arrival of the first Africans. They arrived um, August 20th, 1619 at Old Point Comfort um, at which what's now Fort Monroe. So it's not That's only... It's captured. I think it's important to note that they were enslaved because there was an African presence in the United States, or not known as the United States, but no, in but it, it, what's now the yeah what's now the United States. So I think it's From important the Spanish that we have that absolutely South. have right. that distinction. It's important to say that that this was the first in the English settled part of our country, and that they were enslaved, and that they were enslaved, mm -hmm. they were captured, and brought here. But it was the beginning of that very long period in American history that built the country and its economy Absolutely. by enslaved people. Indeed. And then we begin to move toward celebrating what 
Africans and then African Americans did well, through the whole history in this country, what they did as enslaved people, what they did um, during the time when they um, fought for freedom and got technical freedom, but not actual freedoms to vote and, and attend schools and things like that. And the whole journey to where we are today and to looking forward to continued gains in economic equality and opportunity. Indeed. Exactly. I'm sorry, that was a little speechy. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the one you should be saying. But I think we all share yeah, in it. You that's know? right. It's, it's not just your story. It's not it's my not. story. It's, it's our, our story. story. Exactly. And it's an important piece of you know history that happened right in our backyard, you know, mm -hmm. here in Hampton, Virginia. And it's an important piece in African American history, but American history overall. And that's kind of why you talk about this as a commemoration and not a celebration. Like typically Hampton's 400th anniversary, we, we called that a celebration, but we dealt with some of those painful chapters. Maybe not, and, and you know, let's not talk about the Native Americans. They're not part of this story, but that's not also the happiest part of our history when, when we were extremely proud. Um, but we, it's there. It's who we are. It's shaped everything that we are to this point. And let's talk about it, let's learn about it, let's understand what happened. Indeed. And then again, celebrate, as you said, some of the music, some of the culture, some of the contributions that have come from our, our Hampton story, our American story, mm -hmm. our African American story. Exactly. Okay, well, no, we're going to wrap up, but did you guys have anything to add? Let's repeat the dates yes. for one thing. Sure, Shana. August 19th through the 21st. Okay. Um, if you want to learn more information, please go to africanarrivalday.com, and on that site you can learn all about the weekend events. Okay. And if individuals want to purchase tickets to the show, That's they can right. do so at uh, HamptonVA2019.com. They can also go to the Hampton uh, Performing and Creative Arts Center, as well as the Hampton History Museum and the Parks and Recreation and Leisure Services Building on Lincoln Street. Okay, so that's great. And I do think it's a good-sized theater. I think we can fit in most people who want to attend, but it certainly would be smart to purchase those tickets ahead just just in case um, we have a sellout, because I hope we do Indeed. attract a wonderful crowd to see that um, very moving play. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for you, coming. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you at some of these weekend long events and continuing up to that big moment when we commemorate 2019. Thanks for watching.